Okay, so, if you don't know who I am, well, hello. My name is Vinny, and almost four years ago, I decided to vet my frustrations about an expansion to one of my favorite video games of all time, The Binding of Isaac. Through a video titled, Why Afterbirth Plus is a Disappointment. It was a very important video for me personally, and even helped me grow this channel into something I'm kind of very proud of. Afterbirth Plus had just released, and it was not what I had wanted at all. It did nothing to revolutionize what had made Isaac just so much fun, and instead decided to make something that felt more like a practical joke being pulled on the fanbase, rather than anything with actual merit. This can mainly be seen in the design of things like Greedier Mode or Ultra Hard. Instead of focusing on ways to make a real challenge, they instead decided to focus on ways to just annoy the player. Hey, come here, come on, come on. Let me tell you a little secret. Ultra Hard? isn't fucking hard. If you know what you're doing, it's just tedious and boring. So, once I was done with that video, I quit Isaac. I rarely played it for almost three and a half years, and I never even fully completed the expansion like I had hoped to do. It completely deflated any and all excitement I had to play the game, and all that remained were these feelings of frustration and resentment. I remember telling friends that I legitimately regretted the hundreds of hours I poured into the game. However, for years I had heard that they had been constantly updating the game with these newly called booster packs that were put in place to heavily revamp the content in Afterbirth Plus. So a few months ago, I decided to hop back into Afterbirth Plus and see what all the hype was about. And let me tell you, after all these years of shitting on Afterbirth Plus, and you know, Isaac as a whole, I frankly was extremely, just extremely shocked to see that it was still fucking garbage. Like, okay, I don't know if I'm just a grumpy old man here, but I did not understand the hype around it. There was some stuff that I, I genuinely did enjoy. Like, I think both Bone Hearts and The Forgotten are just fantastic additions and genuinely add a new level of strategy and innovation to the game. But other than those two exceptions, it felt like nothing had changed. The design was still rooted deep in frustration and monotony. Balance felt even worse because of the large influx of mediocre to trash items. This made it feel like fucking devil deals were wastes of time. I mean shit, most of the time there were just demon babies or fucking red chests, which they nerfed too. Why would you nerf red chests? There's no reason to do that! Delirium and its floor were still lazy garbage, and there was still zero incentive to play greedier mode or go to the dark path. Which is, look, they tried really hard to get you to go to the dark path. Every change they made to the game to make it feel more fresh and exciting was in my eyes a colossal failure, and missed the point of what made the game so much fun. When I think back on the fun of Isaac, I think about all the insanely creative and overpowered runs I got, or difficult runs where I barely won by the skin of my teeth through a challenging, but fair, experience. Afterbirth Plus, on the other hand, was the epitome of all the bullshit that the game had accumulated over the years, and turned it into a hollow shell of its former glory. Now, okay, why the hell am I saying all this? Why is this even relevant at all to a video about repentance? Well, you dingus bingus, I'm getting to it, you just calm down, calm down, and put the pitchforks away. One thing that highlighted to me just how badly Afterbirth Plus was handled was that a week prior to its release, there was a mod for Isaac that was you know, kind of fucking incredible. That mod was called Anti-Birth, and good lord was it a fucking banger. I mean, holy shit, talk about one-upping the fucking competition. Hundreds of new, beautifully animated sprites, three whole new characters, dozens of new bosses, new endings, god-tier music, like, like, holy shit, and even a whole new optional path that was much harder than anything that was in the game previously. It was a fucking experience playing that game. Imagine releasing something like this for free, while fucking loser-ass Afterbirth Plus over here was charging almost $20 for the fucking void. Yeah, you know, the void, you know, 20, 20 dollars worth of work over here. Why don't you just play the same floor over again? Ah, it'll be fine. The quality of the two were night and day, and many people in the community, including myself, were wondering why this wasn't the expansion we got. In my video, I even told people to just go play Anti-Birth instead of Afterbirth Plus, because it actually felt like something that was made out of love instead of spite. I sadly thought that it was the last chance that any good content would be coming to this game, because Afterbirth Plus 
felt like it was the end of the line for Isaac. Edmund and the team were clearly worn out of the game by this point, and if anything new were to happen, they would need new blood. Yep! They hired the fucking devs to port the mod over! Thank God! Thank God! <laughs> okay, 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 calm down. Yeah, okay, I was pretty happy finding out the news that they hired the team behind Anti-Birth, and they're reporting it over to the official game while also adding new stuff to it. Now, don't get me wrong, after the fucking cock and ball torture that Afterbirth Plus was, I, I was still pretty cautious. Would this expansion actually make me give a shit about this video game again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, it could, it could. Yeah, this shit's pretty good. Not even just good, but like kind of everything I wanted this expansion to be. Not to necessarily say it's perfect, you know, no game is ever perfect, but Jesus Christ, this part of the video is really hard to script out and write, mainly because I don't even know where to begin with this expansion. It's just that fucking massive. I guess we can start by saying that this expansion drastically overhauled everything that I had a major problem with with this game. It breathed new life into a game that I had basically been playing on autopilot for years. To explain what I mean by this, let me take you through the steps of an average run of Afterbirth Plus. You start out, you don't take damage on the first two floors, you get the deal with the devil, power through the caves and the depths every single time with relatively little struggle, kill mom, take the polaroid because why would you ever go the fucking dark path? Go through the womb and cathedral as fast as possible because there's no incentive to stick around without item rooms or shops. Kill Isaac and then blast through the chest because you at this point are so broken that it's not even a challenge. This can describe 90% of runs in Afterbirth Plus. There was no good incentive to deviate at all from this routine because the dark room is fucking useless with its reward, the hush fight is a tedious slog, and the void is so- I just- I hate the void! Like, like, wh why add the void at all? It was, su it was such a bad- Now, while actually playing the game became a routine slog in Afterbirth Plus, Anti-Birth, and by extension Repentance, had decided to overhaul the entire structure of how you play through the game. I don't think I can properly convey to you all, especially those not as familiar with Isaac in the crowd, you know, like, like the fucking cowards you are, just how fucking revolutionary these new floors are. Basically, it adds four entirely brand new floors that each have their own incentive to go down and experience. There's the downpour, the mines, the mausoleum, and the corpse. Going down this path rewards you with dozens of new room layouts, enemies, bosses, and even item rooms. The item rooms especially are a large reason to take this path, and Jesus Christ, what a smart fucking addition these are. So when you enter an item room on the alt path, instead of one item pedestal, there are two. However, you can only see what item is present on the first item pedestal. The second item is a complete mystery to you. So if the first item is some shit like bum friend that I'd rather actually die in real life than take, then you can risk it all and see what you get from the second item pedestal instead. It could be a god tier item like Tech X, or some shit like Isaac's Heart. The item rooms add in a fantastic new incentive to go this route, and also due to the fact that you aren't even locked into doing the entire alternate path if you don't want to. The doors to the alternate path always appear on the second floor of each zone. The downpour needing a key, the mines needing two bombs, the mausoleum needing two hearts, and the corpse needing- <laughs> This means that if you finish the downpour and don't have the two bombs needed to go into the mines, you can just hop down the trap door and go back to the regular path. There's nothing stopping you from going back and forth between the two and mixing up the run. However, you might be wondering, if you have all the items necessary to go the alternate path, why wouldn't you? I mean, there doesn't seem to be any downside to going down these extra floors and looking at all the cool new gameplay gimmicks and features that are down here. Well, about that though. Yeah, this shit's fucking hard. <laughs> All the new enemies have insane new attack patterns and can be pretty damn dangerous at times. These guys, especially in the mausoleum with their stupid long tendril things, are incredibly hard to dodge. And don't even get me started on the flies and downpour. But here's the thing, it's actually fucking awesome. 
You know, t time to shit on. It's it's time to shit on Afterbirth Plus some more. I gotta do it. I, I gotta meet the quota. In that expansion, one of the clear design philosophies was to try and make the game harder. Edmund and the team were clearly tired of how easy it was to just turn your brain off and plow through the game with broken run after broken run. And honestly, yeah, they, they kind of have a point. To people like me, there was no real challenge in playing Isaac anymore, and most of the bosses and enemies felt either underpowered or lacked any sort of interesting movesets that allowed the fights to become more engaging. Difficulty is surely something that would have been a welcome addition to the game. However, the way they went about portraying that difficulty was an issue. They relied on bullshit tactics like having bosses with scaling health that made every single time you fight them feel the exact fucking same. They added all these mediocre to bad weapons to make the item pool more boring and frustrating. These are arbitrary things that are just there to annoy the player and do nothing to the actual core challenge of the game. With Repentance, however, it's a completely different story. They actually took time to carefully balance the new enemies and bosses while also not relying on cheap tactics to intimidate the player. They also buffed hard mode to increase the speed of projectiles from every enemy. Just take a look at the side by side of Glutton from Afterbirth Plus and Repentance. His shots are fucking flying in Repentance. This change is one that relies more on the skill of the player rather than bullshit RNG that doesn't even heavily affect a person's run. When was the last time you lost a run because of Curse of the Maze? Genuinely, even the new bosses are much more exciting and fun to fight in this game, while still being a challenge. For example, take a look at one of my new favorite bosses, Rot Gut. This is easily my favorite normal boss fight in the game because it actually takes the gameplay of Isaac and innovates it in a new and exciting way. For the first phase, Rotka is an average wound level boss with some light bullet hell patterns with his attacks. In regular Isaac, that would be all that the boss has to offer. This would be the full fight. However, it begins sucking you into his mouth and takes you to the second phase. Here you have to fight his like liver or some shit in an actual 2D environment inspired by Zelda. And we are still not done because after killing this phase, you have a third phase where you have to kill its heart. And all the while you are dodging attack patterns that are far from the easiest to dodge in the game. It is a boss battle that requires the player to have quick reflexes and game sense instead of just giving it a lot of health that scales while also jumping around with unpredictable patterns. You can tell that they actually cared a ton about crafting new and unique challenges that require skill and precision from the player rather than mechanics that are purely there for annoyance. However, the developer's creativity doesn't stop at just the difficulty when it comes to the all path. What are you, stupid? What, what, you, what do you got, Dongo brain going on up there? One insanely neat addition they added to the game was the process of getting to the actual secret final boss of the alternate path. So at the end of the mausoleum, after fighting the revamped mom boss that shoots brimstone lasers now, like, like Jesus Christ, a flesh-covered door spawns that is reminiscent of the womb. No matter what you try, the door won't open. That is because hidden in both the second floor of the downpour and the mines, there are two hidden knife pieces that you need to open the door. And just, okay, I need to go over both of these parts individually because the handling of the knife pieces is nothing short of genius. I'm sorry, this video's all over the place. It, it, I have a point with this. So the first knife piece you will find in the downpour. While exploring, you will find a room with a rogue mirror inside. To enter the mirror, you need to find a discolored blue fire that you walk into killing yourself. Well, you don't take any damage, but instead turn into the Lost with Holy Mantle. Now what you have to do is go back into the previous room and enter the mirror. Here it takes you to an inverted version of the floor where you need to retrace your steps, refighting all enemies until you get to the item room which contains the first knife piece. Now here's where the big brain plays come in. You could retrace your steps and head all the way back through the mirror with the item piece, returning back into the regular character, but, but you do that if you're a little baby back bitch. If you want some risk versus reward action, you can traverse all the way to the boss room and fight the boss again. If you end up killing the boss, you can pick up an additional second boss room item. Holy shit! <laughs> I know this may seem like a small little thing in the grand scheme of things, but I absolutely adore shit like this. It adds a bit of strategy to the game, because while you do get an extra guaranteed boss room item, you are still now playing as the Lost and you will lose the entire run if you die. So if you suck donkey dick at the game like me sometimes, this game sucks! you are actually at a risk of potentially throwing away your entire run just because of some bad dodges. This is such a cool idea that I end up actually going to the downpour even if I'm not going for all the knife pieces. Just 
just so I can get an additional boss item to help with the run. This is an incredible way to incentivize going down the alternate path, and highlights just how well thought out parts of this expansion can be. And this is the lamest of the two pieces! To get the last knife piece, you have to head to the second floor of the mines. Here you will find a room with a minecart leading to a boarded up room. You have to find three giant unmissable yellow buttons throughout the floor and push all of them to place down minecart tracks so you can get to the door. Afterwards, you come back into the room, jump into the minecart and smash through the fucking board. Once inside, you turn into the base version of the character you chose and the atmosphere gets dark. You walk through these empty rooms one by one with like nothing happening. You can feel the game building up to something intense, but you, you don't know what. The dread slowly builds up room after room before finally you get to the knife piece alone in a room. You go over to it, pick it up, and uh... So yeah, we just have horror set pieces in Isaac now. I swear to God, I'm not kidding when I said this part was genuinely unsettling and freaked me the hell out the first time I saw it. Having to retrace your steps through all of the rooms, but now with added roadblocks and challenges is incredibly nerve wracking while being chased by, you know, this fucking abomination. <laughs> the worst part is once again, if you take too much damage during this part, that's it, your run's over. So with everything on the line, you have to quickly traverse these revamped room layouts without being hit by, you know, this fucking creature. Now, while this part is cool, I, I do have one kind of major gripe with it. This part is incredible the first time. However, having to get the knife pieces every time you want to attempt the secret final boss, you start to see how repetitive the set piece actually kind of is. I mean, after only a few attempts, I noticed I had seen all of the room types this area has to offer, and with no variation with items coming into play while in this area, it becomes the same note every time. If they added some more room variations into this part, I think it would make the section more than just a fun set piece for the first few attempts and then a repetitive slog afterwards. Also, you, you know, you know, not to toot my own horn here. <laughs> I ended up learning how to cheese the fuck out of this chase. Since they give you iframes while going in and out of doors, you can just become unkillable whenever the monster charges. I don't really find this a flaw. I actually think it's pretty cool. I just wanted to brag about how I found out about this all by myself. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a cool kid on the block. You know, I know what sex is. Once you have both of the knife pieces, you are now able to penetrate into Mom's womb and fight a revamped Mom's heart. Once you defeat it, everything goes dark and you are able to enter the corpse. These are the final two areas of the run and are a much harder version of the womb with wholly unique boss fights. Once you complete both floors, you end up fighting the new secret final boss, Mother. So, I don't really have much to say on this boss, other than it's another two-phase boss in this game that actually adds new and engaging attacks to its repertoire. In any other expansion, this would easily be my favorite boss added. However, here it's just another really fun and exciting boss on top of all the other ones. But yeah, I, I feel like an asshole saying this, since it's such a good fight, but like, for the new final boss to this game, it feels kind of restrained and bog standard. I mean, this was a fight that was in Antibirth. I, I kind of wish they added another boss that, you know, was more wild and exciting, while also, you know, being a thematic and engaging conclusion to the entire series. Let's talk about the new characters. Starting off, we got the bad bitch of Bethany over here. Now, I'm not unfamiliar with this character. She was introduced in the original release of Anti-Birth and was probably one of my favorite things about that mod. I don't know what it is exactly, but the way she flips the entire dynamic of the game on its head by how she handles spirit hearts is something that I just absolutely admire. <laughs> Bethany starts with base Isaac stats, however she also is given two spirit hearts. But whoa! What's this I spy with my little blue eye? <laughs> she seems to have a funny book as her active item, and a little counter for how many spirit hearts she is holding. Using the book generates an orbiting fire around Bethany that shoots out additional tears whenever you fire. Now while this is cool, what I really love about her is how spirit hearts affect the character's playstyle. When you pick up a spirit heart, instead of it giving you extra protection, Protection, it instead is added to the counter in the corner. This is your spirit heart reserves, where you can use the spirit hearts you 
gain to charge your active item. So this leads to a scenario where you are rewarded with a much higher DPS with the fires. However, your trade-off is a lot of your survivability in the process. But here's where they drastically pivot from the design of Bethany and Anti-Birth and create probably my favorite normal character in the game. If you pick up another active item, instead of it replacing your funny book, it is instead assimilated into it. This changes the charge of the book to whatever it was for the item you just picked up. And an amazing detail that I just absolutely love is that the flies all have their own unique sprites for whichever active item you have out and it's just is just really cute. This addition sometimes also changes the way the flies behave. One of my new favorite synergies in this game is Bethany with How to Jump. Not only do you get the insane mobility and invincibility that How to Jump offers, but now every time you jump, you fucking dive bomb a fly right below you. This means that in every room, if you just keep jumping, you'll get an entire brigade of flies all shooting towards your enemy. I love everything about her in here. and. She actually gets deal with the angel precedent. They did it. They made deals with the angels good. Thank you. The second character to talk about is also one ripped straight from anti-birth. And it's actually what we in the gamer business call a two for one special. These two fine gentlemen are Jacob and Esau, and there's a lot to go over here. These guys are easily the most complex characters in the game when it comes down to pure mechanics. To put it as simply as I can, you are actually just controlling two characters at once. Jacob starts with four hearts and the average Eden run amount of damage, while Esau starts with one heart and one spirit heart while also putting out the damage. You control them both just by moving around, and you can control only Jacob by holding down control in your key keyboard or some other fucking button on the controller. I, I don't know. I'm not a little bitch. You also need to make sure when picking up any item, you give it to the correct character. Both Jacob and Esau have their own independent item pools, pill slots, card slots, and active item slots. To access Jacob's active item, it's spacebar, and to get to their pills, you have to hold control and then hit spacebar. For Esau, it's the same thing, except just replace spacebar with Q. Now, I know this seems like a lot, and yeah, it's as complicated as it sounds. These two are a bastard to control. It really feels like you're driving a goddamn tractor trailer through these rooms because you have such a wide berth. <laughs> I hate saying the word berth, but it's funny. It gets even worse when sometimes you dodge around an obstacle and Esau gets his fat dump truck ass stuck on it and you don't realize until it's too late and now you two are separated, basically meaning that it'll be a miracle if one of them doesn't take damage. Oops! Now, without aggravating the sounds, you might think I hate these characters. And once again, you stinky doo-doo fart brain, you're wrong. You see, once you get the handle of these two characters, they can actually be a lot of fun to manage. For example, when you enter a new room, it always keeps the character that was closest to the door in front. This means that if Jacob is low on health, you can actually position him to the back and have Esau be point man. This level of strategy through managing the characters is a lot of fun, on top of having to ration out health and items to whichever character you think deserves it more at the time. Because of course, if one of them dies, they both die. Because of all of this, I can easily say that Jacob and Esau are the hardest of the two new characters added to the game. Be because that's all that was added, right? Yeah, no, they, did, they didn't add any more. You know, that's it. That's all they added, right? <laughs> Let's talk about the balance changes. So this is easily the most controversial part of this expansion. Even now, as of writing this a few weeks after release, people are still split on what to make of it all. Basically, if you did not already know, one of the strangest things they did with this expansion was overhaul a lot of the pre-existing items in the game. Some of them got buffs, others got nerfs. Now, here's the tricky part about all this. There are over 600 items in this game at this point, and I'm not gonna be Mr. Dumb Loser Baby Bitch over here and discuss every single one of them and if they were changed. Especially since some of the changes were incredibly minor, like changing Krampus's head's charge from, get this, six rooms to three. Holy shit! Instead, I kind of want to talk about some of the more notable examples while also giving my two cents on the matter as a whole. I'm of two minds with this entire thing. With some of the changes, I, I absolutely adore them. For starters, the buffs on previously useless to straight up detrimental items like Isaac's Heart and Holy Water is a goddamn miracle. You can now charge Isaac's Heart that can both shoot tears and push away any nearby enemies. 
it is frankly a godsend and makes the item actually not hot garbage. The change to holy water is even better because now it acts like a better Bob's brain, where you can shoot it at an enemy and it breaks for a short time before being respawned. Changes like these are absolutely brilliant, and it seems like it was an important part of the development process. I even like some of the nerfs done to specific items like Satanic Bible. It used to be just a straight upgrade to the Book of Revelations because Black Hearts are objectively better than Spirit Hearts due to how they provide Necronomicon damage to everyone in the room when you lose it. However, here, they changed it to have an interesting new mechanic. Instead of it just giving Black Hearts, it also replaces every single boss room item with a Deal with the Devil item. Now you can get items from a fantastic item pool, but at the cost of your health. This is an amazing risk versus reward mechanic to add, and makes it an all around more interesting and fun item to use. Instead of it just being a you win the game, fuck you item, it actually has some strategy behind its use. But here's the thing, for every amazing change like those listed before, there's some nerfs that absolutely fucking baffle me for their inclusion. One of the most egregious examples is what they did to my boy Dark Bum. Instead of always paying out with Spirit Hearts, now he pays out with a random assortment of consumables, with the once in a blue moon Black Heart. Now instead of being a fun way to trade the health on the ground to get something better, he's now just as trash as the rest of the Bum Familiars. They also limited items like Blank Card from allowing it to be used with runes, and items like Serpent's Kiss or the Virus don't drop Black Hearts anymore. And also, why would you fucking nerf Pilsebo to have a larger charge? Charge time. That item sucks! And the nerfs don't stop there. They also nerfed non-item mechanics like shops. Half the time now, it feels completely useless going to shops because for some reason they decided it would be a brilliant idea to make it a dice roll if items will even show up. They also made it so you can't strategize your health as effectively in deals with the devil because it will change to the amount of spirit hearts you are currently holding. Now I know that a lot of my complaints here will be invalidated by the philosophy that they wanted to make the game harder to break and more challenging. But like, they already did that. The challenge added with the alternate path and the overall game feel of the expansion being a lot faster paced with enemies movements and shot speed being basically doubled, why did the nerfs feel necessary? Don't get me wrong, I like a good challenge. I play Devil May Cry. <laughs> but nerfs always bothered me in non-online competitive games like this. There was no truly easy way to break the game. Most of the time, it required a lot of risk, strategy, and most importantly, luck. Hell, most of the fun I get out of Isaac is finding new and exciting ways to become as disgustingly powerful as I can be. You already fixed the fucking problem of that being too common by adding even more items to the item pool and making the early game even more brutal. Why would you nerf the fun and interesting items for this sense of challenge? It's so bad to the point that I actually don't think I would recommend this expansion to first time players. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't recommend this game at all to people, I've, I've basically been sucking this expansion's dick up until now. <laughs> But for a person just starting out, this expansion says fuck you because it's clearly tailor-made for the hardcore fans while leaving any potential newcomers in the dark. For a long time, it seems like the development crew have been insecure about how easy Isaac is for long-time players, and I've been trying to make the game harder and harder for those people just to say, we're not an easy game for casual babies, yeah, shut up. See, that's how you make an argument, folks. Y you put your enemies' voices in like a stupid voice. But the thing they don't realize is that there is nothing wrong with having the game be easy every now and then. And please, please don't misinterpret this as me saying I don't want the game to be hard. Far from it. I just don't feel like they needed to nerf items and mechanics when they already spent so much time and energy tweaking the challenge of this game to this degree. While this is not a deal breaker at all for me, it is kind of a disappointment to see that they didn't just leave this philosophy back in Afterbirth Plus. However, while most of the nerfs suck major donkey dick, I absolutely adore what they did with the aesthetics and music. The visuals especially are above and beyond what I could have possibly hoped for. They even got the popular artist from the community, not your Sagittarius, to do a large amount of the sprites. She even added the Isaac Pog face into the game! Let's go! Not only are all the new sprites added to the game just fucking 10 out of 10, they decided to go and revamp a shit ton of the old sprites to better fit the aesthetic. One of my favorites of which being the added icons on shop rooms, dice rooms, library, all that shit. They all look so damn good and are severely needed. Musically, 
Jesus Christ, I've shat a lot on Rebirth soundtrack, but Ridiculon outdid themselves this time. Now don't get me wrong, I'll shit on Ridiculon all day and night for not being anywhere near as good as Danny Baranowski, because Jesus Christ, it is night and fucking day on some of those tracks. However, when it comes to the new tracks added here, some of them just go fucking above and beyond. One of my favorites being the track added to the downpour just being some moody ass shit. So, yeah, that's Repentance. For being such a highly anticipated expansion for me, it was basically everything I wanted from a port of Antibirth. It took what made that mod so good and transferred it over to the full game as seamlessly as possible. Only one thing bothers me though, and it's it's been bothering me for a while. Edmund kept parroting that this game would basically be Isaac 2.0, and frankly, I, I just don't buy that. I mean, unless there, there's something I'm missing. I don't really see what the hype about it being basically a sequel is. I mean, I, I don't think I missed anything. I, did I? Oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, we're not done quite yet. Okay, so some may have caught on that I have been leaving out talking about, uh, you know, small portion of this expansion. I mean shit, there is a clear open space on the post-it notes for one final boss battle. There is obviously something I am missing here, and the reason I've been holding out for so long on talking about it is because I've been having a bit of trouble finding out how I should structure the next part. So basically, I'm just gonna go through step by step on this section here and explain everything that happens on the final floors. After beating the mother for the first time, you get an unlock saying that a new door unlocks in the depths too. So thematically, making the most sense, I decided to trek down there as Isaac, where I was met with a door that had an indentation clearly reminiscent of the Polaroid. Putting two and two together, I beat mom, picked up the Polaroid, teleported out with a fool's card that now always spawns from a tinted skull in depths too, great game design, and used it to open the door. This now leads you to a version of the mausoleum. So, I carry on, fight through the floor like normal, and finally get to the boss room where I am greeted with a note. Picking it up gives you the item Dad's Note, and you are transported to a hazy memory version of the level. This is where this shit gets really fucking cool. You start hearing the remnants of an argument going on, and you suddenly realize that you are hearing the moments leading up to the divorce of Isaac's parents. He's self-destructive and disturbed just like his father. Look at who he has to look up to! And you're drunk again, aren't you? Shut up, Maggie! Shut up! You need to confess your sins and become saved. Let his light inside you cleanse your you soul! You are insane. You are taking this too far. Can't you hear how you sound? Pray with me. Pray for your salvation. Come, pray with us, Isaac. Where are you going? Wait! We need you! Your son needs you! I'm doing more harm than good. This is nothing short of awesome, and thematically fits so well with what the story of Isaac has been going for. It's depressing, sad, and kinda does hit home with me on a personal level. However, fuck that noise, because now you have to fight your way back through every single floor you previously went through. This is not the hardest challenge in the world, especially since you are most likely quite powerful at this point. However, they do add in these fun new unique enemies that are definitely a challenge. I especially love this funny handman. Look at the funny handman. So you fight your way all the way back to the start of the game and head through one last beam of light, where you are suddenly taken to a whole new area. Isaac's home. So I make my way through the house and find mom's room. I head over and touch the bed when I'm greeted to this. That cutscene fucking got me the first time watching it. And with everything being so dark and ominous, I knew I was getting ready for something big. I head out of the room, back into the living room, when I'm greeted with this.
Jesus fucking Christ. Welcome to die, die, motherfuckers. This fight is just so cool. I mean, for starters, the thematic choice of having the final boss being the manifestation of Christian propaganda is one that is super fucking strong. But it's another thing to have this fight be so fucking hard. There's two phases to this boss. One where you have to fight the umbilical cord coming out of the TV, and then the angel that comes out of the baby. Both are incredibly difficult and have some fucking disgusting bullet patterns that you have to dodge. Like, in my opinion, the hardest in the game. But eventually, you whittle them down and finish them both off. But you still aren't done. Okay, wait, hold on for a second. I really could dissect all of what makes this the best fight in the game and just everything with it that I love. But you know what? This is my channel. Fuck you. I live streamed my reaction of the first time ever beating this fight. So I'm just gonna play some highlights from that instead. Tank this, tank this. We gotta get to the next phase. All right. Everyone, shut up. Shut up. I've seen this, but I don't know if it changes. Okay. This is where it gets fucking hard. I haven't even gotten to fight the boss yet. I didn't get past the horseman. All right. Woo! All right, let's go. We a shmup now, gamers. Just take it slow. Dodge. Focus on dodging. Okay. Uh, Holy Mantle. We lost a holy mantle, that's fine. One! Good, 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 good. Book of Shadows regens! Huge! Okay, okay, that's huge. I should have just done the Book of Shadows. All right, two. Two down. War is what fucked me up. I, I don't remember if it was war or death. Get away, get away, get away. Oh, that hit, that's fine. We're, we have really good damage. Mom's knife is fucking them. Okay, 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 okay. Half of our health. Half of our health. Death is scary, so we're gonna pop. And we're just gonna tank. Alright, it's out. This is the part. Yes, okay! I haven't seen the rest of this. Huge, 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 huge. This is, this is new. Alright, let's go! What is this thing? How do we fight you? Alright. Alright, 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 it's Flappy Bird. I'm a Flappy Bird gamer. I was big into Flappy Bird, you know? <laughs> Everyone loves that game. It was such a hit game when it came out. <laughs> oh my god. He's sucking, he's sucking. Okay. No! Okay, 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 okay. Fucking love Flappy Bird. Oh! Okay, okay, he's, his horns are dead. He's got one more eye. Just focus on dodging. Did we win? Did we win? Isaac and his oh! <laughs> Holy shit! And let me pause you one more time right here. So I was told by my chat that while playing through the regular game, that I should drop and leave a trinket in one of the boss rooms. I didn't really know what they meant by that, but they told me to do it, so I did. Later on, while replaying all of the floors to get to Isaac's house, I noticed the trinket I had left on the ground was replaced by what is called a cracked key. I was instructed to take this item all the way up to Isaac's house and use it in the secret room next to Mom's bedroom. So I did just that and I found Isaac. I didn't know what it was exactly at the time. I honestly assumed it was just the new final secret hard character that all of these expansions usually have. And, well... I was, I was kind of right. Okay. Hit E on the character select state, select screen. Okay. Ah, it's the house. All right. What is this? What is this? What is this? Come on, my video is going to get delayed. What the fuck? I got to do it again? I got to do this again? What is this bullshit? So it's not even an extra character. What the fuck is this? Uh, that fits. What I have? What the fuck? They're all unique. No! Fuck! <laughs> I thought it was a joke. This video is not releasing on time. 
That's so much more! Holy, holy shit! That's what he meant when he said this was Isaac too! Dude! I'm so glad I streamed this! Oh my god! I genuinely have not had a reaction to a game that strong since my first time going through the near games back in 2017. It's been so long since I have felt that level of shock, joy, and fucking anger because god damn it, this video has taken me like a hundred times longer to make because Edmund, fucking dickhead, had to add in like 13 new characters and hiding basically the sequel to Isaac in here. Fuck you, dude. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Josh now. I'm really happy about it. Welcome to the tainted characters. These are what you unlock by doing that cracked key trick with every single character in the game. And these aren't even small little quirks done to pad out the length of the game. No, 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 fuck that. Every single one of these characters are unique. Now, okay, this, this, this is hard. This is hard. I want to get this video out within this millennium. And at the time of writing this, I don't really have every single tainted character unlocked. So, I'm sorry guys, I'm just going to quickly summarize my favorites of the Tainted characters. Dear God, please help me. So first off, we have Tainted Isaac. Their gimmick is that instead of having the D6 as an active item that you need to use, it is instead a passive character trait that always shows you both options that you can get from the item pedestal, which rotates every one second. You may also have noticed that in the top left corner of your screen, items are being displayed in eight boxes. Basically, Tainted Isaac can only hold a total of eight passive items in their inventory. If you pick up an item past that limit, then the first item in the row will get dropped onto the ground. You can also change which item is the next in line to get dropped by hitting control. You're going to hear me say this a lot when talking about Tainted characters, but this version of Isaac is easily the superior way to play the character. It is so useful to be able to see both options of what you can get, and the amount of strategy only being able to hold 8 items allows for makes this one of my favorite characters in the game. Next up, we have Tainted Kane, and Jesus fucking Christ Tainted Kane. So his mechanic is a bit complicated to get a grip on right away. Kane has a very similar grid to Isaac, but this time it's in the bottom right corner of the screen, with his all new wonderful little bag of tricks. Another thing you may notice is, holy shit, you can't pick up items anymore. Yeah, so instead of getting items normally, you need to pick up consumable items off the ground with your bag, and then craft them together to make the items. I guess we're just every single AAA game releasing nowadays. I'm waiting for you guys to laugh. I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, if you couldn't already tell, Tainted Kane is easily one of the most advanced new characters added to the game. I especially like how eventually you start learning what certain consumable combos will get you, so you begin to strategize and risk some of the better items because it will guarantee you a better item. This combined with the uniqueness makes this one of my favorite characters in the game. Next, Tainted Eve. Ooh, ooh, ooh I love... I like me some Tainted Eve. So this version of Eve starts off with three hearts and also has a usable item in her pill slot. Now you may be wondering what it does, but while you were sitting there playing with your fat fucking man tits like the gamer you are, Oh god! Oh the hell's going down! Oh, what is that? What the fuck is that? These little fucking freaks! Get out fucking away Yeah, so Tainted Eve has the unique mechanic where her health slowly lowers as you play. However, the health she had goes into spawning what I like to call the boys. Uh. <laughs> if you're a little bitch and don't like hanging out with the boys, then you can get rid of them with your active item, but, but fuck you if you do that. You can even keep regenerating the boys with more red hearts that you pick up, and spirit hearts, and bone hearts, and black hearts, all the fucking hearts! We're, we're gaming with the boys tonight! Are you seriously watching porn by yourself? Nah, I'm with my- no! This new strategy for playing the game combined with the power of the working class makes Tainted Eve one of my favorite characters in the game. Do you see the pattern yet? Next, Tainted Judas is just Virgil. He's the exact same as normal Judas, but he has a judgment cut that reacts on more enemies you hit. I, it's just fucking rat. Unlock him first. He's, he's easy. Don't he's get just so cut. It's just, he's Virgil.
Next, the last tainted character I feel like talking about right now is Tainted Lilith. Instead of having Incubus follow around and be how you shoot, you instead have a half melee, half projectile shooting fetus attack that splurts out of Lilith's stomach. It's one of the most disgusting things I have yet to see in this game, and I, I kind of fucking love it. The thing I really love about this character is that she's actually pretty easy. Early floor enemies die in one hit from the flying fetus, and by the time you get to later floors, you'll be doing insane damage with only a few upgrades. She plays a lot like a Zazel in this way. If you are new to the game, I would definitely start by trying to unlock Tainted Lilith. And with that, Tainted Lilith is obviously one of my favorite characters in the game. So yeah, I basically love all the new Tainted characters that I've played so far. As of writing this, I've unlocked some more characters like Tainted Bethany, Tainted Loss, Tainted Greed, who are also very fun. All these new characters alone could supplement a new game, let alone an extra mode in an expansion pumped full of new content, music, graphics, enemies, fucking everything you can think of. The tainted characters literally make this one of the most intricate and expansive expansions I have frankly seen. I've ever seen is what I meant to say. Damn it. The biggest problems I had with Afterbirth Plus when it released was that it felt like a lazy attempt to boost the amount of content in the game, while also seeming to be a spiteful, cynical experience that only had the one goal of fucking with its core fans. It frustrated me to no end, and it almost made me give up on the entire franchise. I never played Bumbo, never touched the card game, and I considered all those hours of me playing the original Rebirth a waste of time. The biggest thing I can say about Repentance is that it actually made me give a shit about Isaac again. You can tell so much heart and soul from the entire development team was poured into it. The addition of people who were actually diehard fans of the original game was easily the greatest idea they could have had. If any of you out there that worked on this game watched this video, except Tyrone, fuck you, you racist asshole, I just want to say congratulations, like seriously, congratulations to succeeding where the last expansion failed. You guys took the complaints that people had to heart and spun that into creating a genuinely unforgettable experience that restored my faith in the franchise. It's fucking awesome to see all that hard work genuinely pay off. And while this may be the end for Rebirth as we know it, I'm glad to say that it ended on a fucking banger of an expansion.